everybody, this is the Torg Eternity Delphi Council debriefings where the storm has a name. We are your hosts, Lehman, Mark, and Jay. And today we have an email that we will get to, and then the uh, topic for today, we are going to do chases. So if you have any questions on the how chases are based off of dramatic skill resolutions dsrs look two episodes ago when we <laughs> discussed uh dsr so we don't have to uh go through that again but first let's uh go to the email that was sent to us by sean uh sean has a is a question about corruption charisma loss and it's uh just a delphi I was wondering if the Isle Magic Wonders could restore lost charisma due to corruption as other stats lost. Um, if if we don't understand this correct, Sean, please send us a follow-up email. Um, what we kind of figured is maybe this harkens back to when we were discussing um, optional house rules and things about how you can have in your game any permanent injury such as by a near death uh defeat test that you succeed some of those give out attribute losses how to build those back and one of the things that we brought up or a quest or some type of isle magical wonder to bring it back so that's what we're assuming with this um but if there was something else if there is some isle magical wonder in a printed material that restores attributes that i'm not thinking about or none of us could think about please let us know if there's something so then i can take a, a look at that um so what we're gonna talk about for this is just kind of our opinions and how we would do this if this became a quote unquote problem in the game or if it was something that us at our tables would allow or not so let's go with jay your thoughts on isle magic wonders and we can also say anything you know other type of things it doesn't i guess necessarily mean specific isle things but you fail corruption check you lose a point of charisma do you would you allow something to bring that back thoughts ideas on that i mean if you were already allowing that i don't see why not uh because you could just buy your charisma back with xp normally the corruption doesn't permanently like stop you from doing that so in the same way you could buy back any lost uh attribute uh, from an injury with XP, you could do that with corruption as well. So I don't see if you were allowing it, why not? Um, you might want to make it a, maybe a tougher thing to do. Uh, it's up to you. I could I could see, however, a GM ruling the other way because normally to get rid of corruption uh, and get your charisma back is quite an ordeal. There's currently the hope perks in the horror source book. And the one of them, Brighten the Fading Light, does yeah. let you get back that charisma. But it does require some time and an expenditure of possibilities. So um, it, it exists uh, as a way. Normally, that's only available to Core Earth and Orosh characters. But I could see other realms having their own ways of doing things. Uh, even like pretty much any realm should have probably some way of doing it once they've been exposed to Orosh long enough. And I think Isle, considering they're dealing with like the discount gaunt man there. Uh, the discount uh, gaunt man. Out of any of the other invading <laughs> realms might have an idea. So yeah, uh, I don't see why not, but I would make it like probably the focus of an entire session if you're going to do that. Like I wouldn't make it something you could just requisition away. Right. Or between acts. Hey, the Delphi Council says, go yeah. to this spot, you know, dip in the little pool and you're Yeah, there would be more to it. <laughs> Um, Mark, your your thoughts on charisma loss well, I mean, due to corruption. <clears throat> Specifically, the email mentioned Isle, and so from an Isle focus, you're you're dealing with the land of high magic. So I would think that if you wanted to go 
find a magical ritual or a magical whatever MacGuffin bean, whatever to restore charisma. Could you? Sure. I mean, it's your cosm. You can make, if you want to make your own rules up and say, this is how it works. You can absolutely. However, if you want to harken back to old school, I used to have honor. I used to keep track of points for being honorable, right? So maybe part of what you, like Jay said, it needs to be, I, and I completely agree with Liam and Jay on this. It's not just a, oh, look, I got my point of charisma back. I failed a corruption test. I got my point back. Look, piece of cake, done. And there's nothing involved in, you know, then what's the point of corru corruption loses its sting at that point. If it's just, you know, becomes a transactional thing, even with XP getting back your point of char charisma, you could make the argument that you didn't actually get that particular point back. You lost that to – that's still corrupted, and it's kind of over here special by itself. The point you got back, which is still, you know, let's say you went to, from 6 to 7 or 5 to 6 or whatever, that's a completely different point that you bought with your experience. But you're still stained and tainted over here with this corruption. Right, you didn't you didn't absolve corruption when you bought it off with with X, XP. The math is there, right? You got this, you got the numbers back, but you're still got this little piece of corruption over there that's holding you back. So I would think that from an aisle standpoint, you would want to make it a quest of some kind, some kind of you know honorable, got to do the right, good, carry the light kind of stuff. To it's got to be something that that counteracts. The corruption and from a gm standpoint i would think it would become very unique to whatever caused you to lose that point of corruption that that quest becomes you know it, you'd have to i I that as a gm i would want to put a little time into it not just say okay go over here and carry the MacGuffin from point a to point b and fight the bad guys and deliver it there and you get your point of corruption back well every time you lose that point of corruption you just do that cycle and you get it back no what did you do to cause yourself to become corrupted? Okay, now we have to counterbalance that. And so something very, very specific would need to happen in in game, in aisle, whatever, to counterbalance that it, from the standpoint of corruption versus honor, I guess. Okay, so my thoughts on it would be similar to that or both what Jay and Mark says. I would make it something individual. It wouldn't be a, oh, this is a way to cure corruption. It is a this is a way this character can gain a their uh, lost charisma back. Then I would make the decision, does gaining that point of charisma mean that you weren't corrupt anymore? Because as Jay pointed out, you could buy those back with XP, but you still have failed a corruption test which looking at like the bright and the fading light that jay talked about all it says is at least one failed corruption test it doesn't say that you have to have that point mm -hmm. still lost um and that prevents you can spend a possibility at the end of each of the next three scenes to uh negate that that loss so there's various ways that you could look at it um I would tend to go for the corruption is eternal, so you're still corrupt. If there is anything, like if you've ever failed a corruption test, it's harder for the next one. In this specific instance, that person still has that corruption attached to them, um, but get that lost charisma back. And then for the corruption is eternal type thing, I can think of a few things that as a game master would be interesting um to to have that character go through some type of journey um as an example maybe that because a lot of the things with defeating nightmares and aurora is you then get corrupt or have the chance of getting corrupted yourself um have that be something like you get to the thing and you're trying to get rid of this corruption and have the character make a, a check and then if they succeed, they lose the corruption, but that corrupted piece of them becomes something. Some Aurorsh nightmare or mini nightmare. Token or something. That then they have to cut their off. hand off with a chainsaw. And yeah, you know, then it it 
it runs away or, or whatever and then it becomes something that <laughs> yeah. gets more powerful and it's a piece of you you know so it's like a shadow you a corrupted version of you you know things like that um and i i always say at your personal table you can beg borrow and steal anything from any other game if it, if it fits and something that I, as a player, had went through in a, in a different game that wasn't Torg Eternity, but it was uh, made by, or it was partially uh, designed, I guess would be the good word, by uh, Greg Gor Gordon as well. So you can kind of see a lot of his themes of early 90s games. I was playing a character that was going to die, and I had a cursed item on me, and I didn't know it was a cursed item, and the trigger for it was to kill or be killed while in possession of this item and i was killed and then the item spoke to me hey do you really want to die i could team up with you <laughs> okay i accept it i don't want to die and then after that every time we were in a fight it was wanting me to stab things and, and kill them and you know taste their blood and giving me bad mental you know thoughts and, and stuff like that can't imagine why that would be <laughs> no 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 idea why whatsoever <laughs> but one of the things was i would never use it because it was a knife and my weapon was a hammer and just going from a hammer to a knife you know like a big war hammer to a war hammer type thing was was bad and then we found a magical forge and i was going to do something else with it and it's like hey you don't like me as a knife you can reforge me into you know anything you desire and i was just like to the game master was like this could kill me i understand this could kill my character you know <laughs> i try to break that bond between it and me and i could understand that this is a make it or break it but so and it, it it wasn't like the next adventure it was you know like maybe 10 adventures later and it was like i'm tired of this thing i my character is determined death is better than s sticking with this cursed object, but this is my chance and I'm going to take it. He had me roll um, a test against it. I succeeded. Um, the knife was not happy. The knife found somebody <laughs> else because um, I didn't want to touch it after that. <laughs> so we kind of left it in what we thought was a safe spot. And then the next time we went there, no such thing. It, it was gone. <laughs> And it's made a, a, at least a couple of appearances since then, but it's been an ongoing thing, and we've probably have had thirty, you know, sessions on and off since then. So you can that that's how I would see the cor corruption is. It doesn't necessarily just mean the end of it. You can change it as a game master, make it unique, kind of heal the character, but that piece of corruption that was taken from them is still out there. It's still a thing and it could, you know, haunt them and become a new BB BBEG. Um, yeah. And maybe but, if it's from a, a magic well or something that you're drinking from, maybe that poisons the well and now right. nobody else nobody can else ever can use it, it again. Right. <laughs> so there, there's, there's various ways. So I do want to thank you for that uh, email. If we misunderstood it, please let us know and we will uh, review that and see if we can get it right. But if so, there are some ideas for you and your, your game master. Um, so that was our uh, one and only email that we had. Please uh, email us at torgdcd at gmail.com with your questions and comments and we will read those and answer, in the, answer them as we did with Sean's question. And thank you, Sean, for writing that. Um, so let's move into chases. So we're going to talk chases, um, a couple of the the differences mechanic-wise from DSRs, even though they're built on the DSR framework. Um, and then after we get done with mechanical stuff, we will give our opinions on chases because I don't like chases at all. Jay says that his group does not like chases. Um, we'll see what his views on them are. And I know Mark loves chases. Um, so you viewers and listeners will be able to get a wide variety of opinions and options yeah. that you can take to your table to, to fit it to your own cosm first. Um, so chases, as I said, are built on the framework of a DSR. So you have a step A, a B, C, D. You can have dilemmas. 
um, the possible setbacks, complications, critical problems, etc. Um, and players, the, the characters will move from, from step to step. Um, and I'll, I'll say at the beginning that even though I don't like chases, I understand the purpose of them. It's a, it's a big movie TV trope. I mean, there's whole movies, Fast and the Furious, based off of chases. So, you know, it, it has that background to it. So if we get into the mechanics, the one thing or one thing to be aware of is how the speed value works. Instead of the Game Master coming up with a difficulty number and then a skill that goes against it, the difficulty number is set by the top speed value, and here's the term, value of the fastest participant involved. Value is not your attribute number. So if your dexterity is a nine, your value is not a nine. You have to go to either, <laughs> uh, the, the best thing is to look on page 275 at the Torg value chart. And you have to do a, a little, well, you don't have to. I'll, I'll give you the easy way. Um, but what you normally would do is you would take your uh, your speed. You would uh, figure out what the run speed is. Of, of Your move. Then, or your, your, yeah, your move. <laughs> sorry, your, your move. And then you would be able to use that to calculate what your value is, like how fast you're moving in kilometers per hour to get the torque value chart. Um, as an example for a, uh, let's look at a water vehicle, the Oda Dragon, which is a Pan Pacific a water vehicle. It has a, a speed of kilometers per hour of 160. So if you look at that value chart and the base number of 160, um, you would see that that gives you an 11, but you go, wait a second, in the book it says this is a 13. Why? Well, because you take kilometers per hour you uh, and convert it to meters per 10 seconds. And when you uh, take that 160, if you just do it in meters per minute, it's 2,666. You divide that by 6 to get to the 10 seconds and then you're at 444 and when you look at that base number 444 it is a 13 and that is what the value is in the book the easy way to do that is figure out what your movement is look at the value and add two that's the the quick and dirty way to do that so in the same thing i could look at the 160 um and that would be a value of an 11. I add two, I get 13, and that ends up with the, the same number. Um, that was a conversion that they liked putting into classic Torg. Had the value and measure chart, which was similar, but they had all these little like pluses and minuses to be able to quickly shift back on the fly. Um, for speed, it is take your 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 rushing or your running movement. So for that value that that dexterity of nine nine times three to get your run speed your rushing speed is 30 and then that's a seven um based value so it's not a nine and again you can just look at it as a nine subtract two you got a seven so that's the quick and, and dirty method um, any be before i move on jay mark do you want to add anything if i made it too convoluted or, or something i mean the the measure chart is on the page right before it so yeah 274 can't see it uh for the kilometers per hour oh, yep true uh, true yep. Two, two meters per round uh but i guess the thing is if you're using the full run value just remember they can't do anything else mm -hmm. like no no multi-actioning if they're going at full tilt right otherwise they might be going a little bit slower i don't know if that appreciably changes it or not but depending on your character right right so yes, on, on page uh, 274, they do have, I knew I had seen that somewhere. And then when I was looking at the value chart, <laughs> the, I was the like, page I, right I, across. From I did not <laughs> yeah. look at the, the page in front of it because that's been asked by a couple of editors. They're like, Hey, this value doesn't look right. And it's like, it doesn't look right, but it, it is right because it's not kilometers per hour. You have to convert it. And 
Yeah. So, uh, very, very easy step to miss when doing foot chases. Um, all the vehicles. Oh, we did it wrong. In, yeah, we did it wrong into organized play forever. Well, I mean, we're we were okay. Who's who's Dex? Who's got a who's got the highest Dex? Oh, you got a twelve. Yeah. Okay, your DMs. These are oh. hard. <laughs> That's hard. That's a big de- dude. We're running as fast as this Jeep is. How did we pull that right. off? I, I don't know, but that's how it works. <laughs> somebody, somebody had the bright idea going. Wait a minute, that says value. What's the value? Oh wow, we have to do math. I was told there would be no math. And yeah, then you discover that no, you're not. You're going seven, and the Jeep is going twelve. So <laughs> that's why. Okay, so just wanted to get that mechanic out. The other one, um, I believe Mark brought it up in a previous episode, is that in chases, each participant is going against all those steps. So instead of a normal DSR, standard DSR, where the group as a whole goes against that, if you're in two cars if your storm knights have to have two cars then each of those cars is a participant doing their own uh a step a b c d etc and if it's a foot race unless you are carrying somebody then every storm knight and every participant who's you know trying to do the the chase is trying to get through the the a through d steps um, the other now, thing... for right or wrong, for right or on that, let me stop you for a second mm-hmm. on that. Uh, for right or wrong, I've run the, a foot chase where one person, like we do stealth with a combined action yeah. as a negative modifier, and I'll let one person test for the the um, the step uh, to pull, like to because you, it's cinematic. Chases a lot of times are cinematic, right? And you, so we we we're using theater of the mind on how does this actually work? Step A, B, C, D which will come up again later, but combined action then becomes this guy or gal is running fast and showing everybody how to get through running through the market or, you know, dodging around the barriers and everybody's just following, following through the trace. Everybody. Yeah. Or, or knocking it down and then everybody comes in behind, but then it becomes, then, then you use the combined action modifier like you do with a stealth check, a group stealth check. And it becomes a, if you're, if you got six people that you're going through, what's that? That's uh minus four. So, if your DN, if your fastest vehicle is a DN twelve, and and or a foot a foot chase is a DN nine, and you now you have to hit a thirteen, you have to hit a thirteen because you're doing it by yourself to get your whole team of six through. So I, you know, do you let that happen, or do you make everybody test? Well, as Jay pointed out, if you're running full tilt, it's all you can do. You can't shoot at anybody. Are the bad guys shooting? Are they running full tilt? That kind of makes chase. Then I can understand why Lehman says I don't like chases because then they become boring. So Jay, your your thoughts on what we've discussed so far? Well, <laughs> it before depends we just on get what... into before we get into flat <laughs> out just opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just talk about the mechanics. Uh, I will say that it does seem like a lot of this is written specifically for vehicle chases mm-hmm. because the dilemmas still exist. And like all of the dilemma uh, examples involve like your vehicle suffers minor damage. It's like, okay. So you twist your ankle, I guess, if you're running. <laughs> um, um, I guess there are some interesting things uh, to be aware of is the distance between steps is kind of abstracted. So it's far enough away that you have a negative two to shoot, like to attack somebody for each step that you're away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not interaction attacks. They're unaffected, except for maneuver, which you can't use at all unless you're on the same step. But it doesn't affect the range for spells or anything unless the GM can figure out how far that is. Like, are you still in range of this 20-meter spell? Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um, so that that's something to be aware of, is like the steps uh, change. And then also when a dilemma comes up or if a card that comes up that does not have the letter since everyone's doing the same thing like the same skill the whole time on like a dsr which has different skills you could pretty much just always make a dex test for a card for an approved action like every round so that's something to be aware of too you can load up on cards real quick unless you're a complete oaf 
But Dex is the not a uh, dump stat in this game usually, so people are usually pretty good at it. Um, I think that covers like sort of the main things um, before we get into opinions. <laughs> Mark, any but any can... mechanical things you wish to add? Yeah, on the range. So abstract's a great word for chases because. You, you you can use chases for any any race, not just somebody pursuing someone, but but a race, because the point is whoever gets to D first succeeds or wins, right? And so D is your finish line, and if it's Group A and Group B are both trying to get to whoever gets to the finish line first wins or succeeds. You can run this as a race and you can make this you can make your time frame in between steps hours if you want to you but but if you're going to allow combat between participants which is what makes i mean it makes that cinematic where the cars are racing around and people are shooting and throwing stuff and whatever you got to take that abstract on ranges and players you're going to have to work with your gms and let them let them give you a a no sometimes when you're like i really want to do this thing well as jay pointed out maybe there's a real good reason why your spell isn't within range like if you're doing a chase between two pocket fighters in the nile and they're doing banking and turning you're not 20 meters away with two fighters you're hundreds of meters away because the weapons that they use are measured in 500 to 1000 meters right so does that spell work? Well, if your GM can come up with a way to say that, you know, because it's abstract, you're two steps away, letting you cast the spell at a minus four because you're two steps away, but you're in fighters that are really, you know, almost a thousand meters separated, you know, be flexible on that stuff. And GMs, you know, be flexible on that stuff too. Don't just, don't just give them a hard no because, you know, but I don't know, I'm hemming and hawing on that. It just, it's really... It's it's hard to pin it down because it, there's so many different ways that a chase can go, or that this this mechanic can work that you can't we we couldn't we would spend a week trying to come up with all of the the different permutations oh, yeah. of how this would go and say well if it goes this way do this but if it goes this way you could do it this way it's, it's part of the art form of being a good GM. And uh, b before I go back to Jay for opinions, also uh, on the the chase page, which is one, page 134 in the core rules, um, there are bonuses depending on the speed of your vehicle. Um, so that also is something to be aware of when you're testing for steps. It's easier for the faster things to make that DN than the slower thing. Um, know your vehicles oh, yeah. your vehicle rules <laughs> and the the page previous to this is vehicle rules we will not get into that because that could be a topic or a part of a episode by itself <laughs> um so jay your your thoughts experiences opinions on chases we're getting completely all right subjective <laughs> So here we masters, go. <laughs> you you have a lot of choices and options to to use in your game. Well, okay. First, I would like to refute something that Leaman said. Okay. I <laughs> do not hate chases. I said you're, <laughs> I just you're hate players. <laughs> <laughs> My players don't hate chases either, okay. but we do kind of hate these chases okay. <laughs> specifically, <laughs> um, because. I think that th these rules were made for one very specific kind of thing. And it even mentions in here, it's about one party attempting to escape the other party, right? So as I mentioned, everything is very abstracted and it's not even a question of if you catch them, it might be that you block them, right? It's So it's not like for a race, it doesn't really work as well in my mind. And it almost seems like it should be the way Mark was saying, almost like a regular DSR with each side getting one role for them instead of every individual running around. Because what I have noticed over the years of chases, and there's a lot of chases in published yeah, adventures, especially in the Nile Empire. 
Oh, and yeah. I started the very first adventure I ran for my group was the Tharkul, uh Day One, uh, and that's got a chase spoilers uh, in it like, <laughs> right away. And they thought that was like the coolest stuff ever. The way like I set it up, but as we did more and more chases, it just got to be that there would be one or maybe two characters that would just obliterate the chase and succeed at the whole thing on round one or two or all the other characters would just be stumbling around behind uh so then you would have to make it is it when one character gets to the objective that you've done it or was does it have to be until all of the characters get there can the characters on other steps aid another there's a lot of uh issues that have come up and it just seemed to be there was there's one adventure which i won't mention uh the name of that has a race Mm -hmm. and it's such a long race that you have to do it twice uh, i'm gonna bring it but i like i know which one you're talking about i like that one a lot but that uh, was over in three rounds (laughs) in my group um so it's a the rules I don't think there's enough to them. I don't like the fact that the difficulty is dependent on the fastest person. I think it's better if the difficulty is dependent on the terrain. Uh, And then you can add in other kinds of modifiers and things like that. And GMs can, of course, add whatever modifiers they want already. So, I mean, it's not like you're you're prohibited from doing so. Uh, But it does just sort of make it, if you're already the fast person, you have such a big advantage compared to the slower people, which I mean, as in a chase would be the case, but even with the speed modifiers from fast, very fast and ultra fast, it's like you double dip in those. Not only are you already fast, but now you get an additional plus two or plus four. It just, um, I don't know if it accomplishes what it wants to. It just makes it very all or nothing. So either you roll normal and kind of fail a lot of the time, or you spend your possibilities and cards and you blow through it completely. So the thing I would kind of prefer to see more, like I do like chases in other systems as well. One of my favorites is in Aces and Eights. It's a Western uh, cowboy kind of game. And it's got one where you just it just uses a regular deck of cards instead of special cards. So I, I've heard Savage Worlds also has a good chase system, but I've never tried it. But it's one of those things where you actually, you draw these cards and you lay them out between. So if someone's got a head start, the longer the head start is, you put these in between. And the cards just randomly, if it's a black card, it's normal. If it's red, there's an obstacle of some kind. And then you see what the obstacle is and might adjust the difficulty to get through there. And I've often thought of trying to make something similar to that for Torg chases. And I'm just hoping that they get tinkered with a bit because the plus side of torque chases right now is they're pretty easy to run aside from that whole speed slash move thing, (laughs) which we always forgot about until fairly recently. Uh, But uh, they are fairly easy to run, but there's so many of them. I think that was actually more the issue with my players. When I, when I mentioned my players Mm -hmm. getting tired of them, not the mechanics so much, but that there's just so many of them especially in the Nile Empire. It's like, oh, it's time for another dogfight. Okay. <laughs> you know, so you got to kind of space that out a bit. But I, I I would prefer to see it based not on the speed of everybody, but more on the terrain. Um, I'm sure there's other things I'm forgetting right now, but that's sort of like the crux of my issues. I don't hate the system. I just find that it's kind of all or nothing. Okay, fair enough. Mark, you love chases. I love yeah. chases. <laughs> I do. I really like chases because in the system, and you got to be creative with it. Because uh, I'm going to say this: I don't, I don't normally advocate for this, but I will in this instance. If you're if you're a raw DM, if you're a rules as written DM or GM, you need to in this instance, you need to get over that and not Mm -hmm. be rules as written for chases because if you do rules as written for chases every single time every chase is going to get boring because it's always going to be the same thing every time and your players are going to go let's chase again all right bob's going to roll and all right well well, you need an a all right who's got it do anybody got to step a okay and you know it's going to be that's going to turn into if you can step into the creative realm of 
what am I trying to accomplish in the game in the game with where I started my players and where I want them to finish? And then thematically in the abstract, to use Jay's word again, you know, describe and through the theater of the mind, give them, you know, explanations of how steps A, B, C, and D work. You will dramatically improve the perception of of races races of chases in your game because they will be different you'll skin them with something different and people will come in and, and when you flip over a card you're like okay so we're going to a b c and d and whoever gets to d first accomplishes the thing or gets the macguffin or whatever you know maybe you're chasing i won't say what what it is but you're there's a thing that's getting kicked around a a, a floor and you're <laughs> Whoever gets to D is the one. I mean, you've seen, we've all seen that in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody drops the MacGuffin and now it's getting kicked around the floor in a dance floor or something like that. Right. And everybody's crawling around chasing after it. Well, you never leave the 20 by 20 dance floor, but everybody's chasing and whoever gets to step D first. Okay. There you could, you use your, a raw deck skill on that. Absolutely. You could. The DN doesn't have to be how fast am I going? The DN just has to make sense from your threats to your heroes, and you have to be able to translate that mechanically to say, well, you have this number versus them having this number because these things here. Okay, as long as the DN is set and it's it makes sense, run with it. Because that, that thing moving around the dance floor, that's not speed, right? That's just sheer dexterity. Or you could could you make it strength? Could if, if you got, you know, your Adinos decides that, you know, he's this death claw optant and he doesn't have a great dexterity, but he's strong as hell and he just want to shove people out of the way and get it. Sure. Let him make that, you know, let him use strength. But <clears throat> races, races are fantastic to me. I love doing DSRs in conjunction with a race, either before, during or after. And then you get bonuses from one or the other based on how well you did. Like a DSR leading into a race, one or more steps in your DSR, success levels matter, and they adjust either where you started or bonuses during the the, the, the chase or whatever. During a, a DSR during the, the, the chase, well, okay, somebody found a bomb in the trunk. Now not only do you have to start it like on step when you get to step B instead of step A. So that everybody's doing step A, saying so you could, no, no big deal. But on step B, somebody discovers that there's a ticking time bomb in the back of the, the, the roadster, the Allen roadster. Oh crap! So now not only do we have to drive and shoot at the bad guys because they're shooting at us, somebody's got to peel away and deal with this bomb. Okay, well now, now the chase. Yes, it's a boring chase, but it's a little different, right? Or whoever gets to the end of the chase first gets a bonus on this DSR because we had to drive to the place that we're going to disarm the bomb. Or whatever the DSR happens to be. Or you got there soon enough to catch the guy who's setting the thing. And so you start a step ahead of them or whatever. So, I mean, you can run them in conjunction. You can run them concurrently. You can run them one after the other, whatever. It's a lot of fun because it adds complexity. And it's something that they don't see very often. The players are like, okay, we're doing a chase. All right, so step A. I'm going to blow my step A card here. Or I'm not going to pull it because I don't need that anymore. We got a step A on that first card. And then you throw a DSR at them all of a sudden. Wait a minute. We need a step A? And we need a step B? Oh, crap. Now what? And it makes them think. So it's a lot of, to me, it's a lot of fun getting really creative. Is it complicated? Yeah. Just think through it before you throw it at people. Okay. <laughs> so now I will state my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm not Race saying that this, this is not the right opinion. It's just a opinion. Is I don't like None of them are right or wrong. They're all, right. they're all opinions. And I will cut chases from any game that I run. If it's a published <laughs> adventure, they will get cut because the very first one I did was the, uh, the actually the one you talked about, Mark, I guess I took it more as a DSR, the chasing the, the item in the dance floor thing. I, I was going to say, that is, about. that is like the best chase okay. out of all so, of them. So <laughs> I, I, I just guessed it was a, a, uh, a DSR and then it's immediately followed by a chase that I absolutely hated and cut. <laughs> this is like, don't need two of these together. Um, 
The other one that I did was the the double the that Jay stated was the double the race that was a <laughs> the double, double race the double race, <laughs> which ended I want to say it was the first or second round. Yeah, it was, and it <laughs> wasn't a risk. and it wasn't by the chase getting completed. It was because combat was happening, and they took out all the opponents. And then the, the chase is, is... I think I remember you telling us about that. Oh, mine was because they drew an ABCD card. Yes, okay. and that's always a risk with, <laughs> with the, the the drama deck. It's always a risk. Yeah, so... and then they seized it. Yeah, seized it. <laughs> or you got somebody who's got a hero drama and they just blow it out of the water because they got glory on it. And you're like, well, okay, what am I got? I got nothing for that. <laughs> but I will say that the only reason I did that as a chase was because I was in Torganized Play using Torganized Play rules, which is more stick to the published material and don't change it as much as I would have changed it. <laughs> um, but like I said, I do see the 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 need for chases. I do see the, I mean, it goes e everything back to, you know, Dukes of Hazard, Starsky and Hutch, uh, Knight Rider, Fast and Furious for more modern stuff. I mean, it's a staple of movie James you know, Bond. Jane, you know, yeah, it, it, I see it also as a as a game master and as a especially as a player, I would appreciate chases more if they were player initiated rather than story or game master initiated. There has been two times as a player which either which uh happened as a a, a fight was going to start or a fight had started and then the fight stopped. And then the chase started, and in one of them, it was like I blocked the exit. Sorry, chase is starting. You know, it's like it to <laughs> me. It was like I was trying to prevent this. <laughs> you, you know, type type of thing. Um, so so on on those, it's just I I would rather as a player participate in a let's just you know let's just fight. Or it's the guy tries to escape, you have your last roll, and if the players go, oh, we want to chase him down, or, you know, a maneuver to get to the chase. Not just a, oh, the chase was written, let's do it, but okay, let's maneuver around to see if he's trying to flee. And then the players go, okay, we want to chase him. Okay, now break into the, the chase rules. Um, is how I would prefer it on both both sides of the game master uh, screen. Um, Every one that I've seen that has a fight, it ends by taking out the other vehicle or the driver. More likely um, is what happens, um, which I then take as my players going. We don't want to chase, so we'll just <laughs> eliminate the. <laughs> the person causing us to go through the chase um, and, and that double chase. That's exactly uh, what, what happened. It was like call shot to the head sniper, you know, the eye that you can do the, the you know, I didn't think you could do that in that chase. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have all the weapons and stuff in it. So it was right. just a, it's been a while, uh, mind you. <laughs> and then the, the main bad guy of that act, he went to soak and I rolled a one. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> and that just added and um i i made a i even made a little video thing it was just me going <laughs> my, my mouth you know dro jaw dropping to the floor looking at the stats at the special abilities and going yep there's there's nothing i can do about that <laughs> yep. so i mean my my bias might be based off of those type of things um where it was like the the chase just happened even though there was a fight before that and uh, players tried to stop it from happening, but it still happened anyway and things like that. Again, if it's player initiated, if it's a, okay, this guy maneuvered to get away, or if you're doing a VTT and you use grids or you use battle maps and they get to the edge of the board like Warhammer, you know, where <laughs> you get to the edge and then you're free and say, okay, now let's start a chase. Um, I'm, I'm much more pro chase in, in that instance than just throw in a chase to to throw in a a chase um so again might not be a popular opinion but that's just just my thing i would rather just in those cases where there's going to be something 
big in front or behind it just have a role to you know you're going up against that per, a, a contest i would rather it be a contest and then the success or failure of the contest maybe if you're foot racing then you catch up and that person had time to set up a defense to get into cover you're winded and you take a few environmental shock damage or or things like that so um, while I say I will avoid chases and I will remove them from games, I will put something in there to take its place, you know, to kind of fill that role. So I do see the role um, of it. And as Jay said, or I think one of the points was uh, the the system be, being based off of the DSR doesn't make it easier to understand and, and go with it. Um, so uh rebukes <laughs> <laughs> i think he means you mark oh well i mean <laughs> or, or okay Jay. i mean i'm the only one that really likes him i don't you know your all your points are valid i mean it, it's your gaming experience um i'm not going to tell you that you're wrong because it's the way you <laughs> run you're stuff. Wrong. <laughs> I'm, i am curious i am curious about what you do when the, the published material says here's a chase to accomplish something or to, to go from this point to that point, and if you get there, you do this or that, what do you do with that? that Do you just weave it back in somehow, or do you just zero it yeah, out? And... Like what I did for the the one where you have the, the getting the MacGuffin, and then you, I think yeah. it was a you jump into cars and, and go off, you know? It was a... Um, I, I had it so that one vehicle could hold all the, the storm nights. I think they even did the like standing on the little side platforms, you know, like gang, gangster the running style, boards. you know, the running, yeah. like the running boards. Cause I mean, there is an image, you know, that's very movie. That's iconic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, iconic. And I had the, their, uh, the, the main, I, I had a contest. So the enemies, you know, the villains who had left first, they rolled, and and got a total for the uh for the uh land vehicles and then it was a contest and they the uh the party won the contest so i had them get to the end point and swerve ahead you know and the car does the the turn and slides to the side in, in front of their car and they stopped and then they were able to you know to Okay, win, so you you just that way. instead of four, I condense it, yeah, yeah. Instead of four rolls, step A, step B, step C, step D, you just gave them one land vehicles roll, and then narrated how that ended up. Which I mean, if that's does that work? Yeah, that absolutely works. And and like on a say a plane or you know a, a dogfight type situation where it's a a <clears throat> chase slash fight. I do a, if you want to kind of have zones instead of A, B, C, D as steps, I'll have zones and each zone will be a, you know, the, the negative two penalty and do a maneuver or, you know, equivalent to get into the you know, air vehicles or something to do a maneuver to get yeah. to the next zone. But it's more of a dog fight. You know, yeah, somebody, like the, somebody's uh, going to, mm -hmm. well, that naval happens combat in that rules. In, mm -hmm. Yeah, I do more of just the vehicle. Uh, and I use that for one of the uh, fire fires of raw had a, like a, a chase thing towards yeah. the end. Yeah, but had it. That, that I I, I did yeah, as like... that. I mean, uh, fires of raw has like eighteen chases. So <laughs> saying a chase, of <laughs> yeah, but it's not raw... empire. I mean, come on, man. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm saying it's, it's I guess... not that much of a spoiler to say. <laughs> yeah. There are a bunch of chases in not all, in, in fires of raw. If you didn't know that when you picked it up and said, "Oh, look, it's a Nile Empire adventure," then you 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 don't know what Nile Empire is all about. So no, I'm I, not gonna I'm not gonna wear you out over it. I just I, I disagree with you. Obviously, no, that, that's that's fine. And like I you know like we've been saying since episode one is everybody's gonna have different types of fun at their table, and yeah. it, it didn't make me quit a group. You know, because of it, like, oh, <laughs> if, you, if you have a chase, I'm leaving. It's like, no, that other people see other things as boring or things that they don't like. And you just move past that and get to something sure. that you enjoy. So, yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I, I, I don't think, I don't think the chase rules do exactly what they're supposed to do, but I don't hate them. Right. And I, and I, I mean, I made 
an adventure with two chases in it. <laughs> For, uh, in fact, I think most of my things have had chases, but uh, I was reminded of a good point uh, when you said something earlier. Outside of published chases, if you are a GM and you want to include chases in, much like DSRs, make sure you have a good um result planned for either result because if you're like okay well the adventure is going to be that the villains are escaping and the pcs have to catch them what happens if the pcs don't catch them mm -hmm. right <laughs> you got you do want to think about these things ahead of time and don't uh accidentally dead end your campaign and that goes the other way around too yeah exactly what if you need the villains to escape mm -hmm. and don't... the pcs catch them because uh, yeah or they they shoot him they don't even let him get out of the room you know i got an eight act <laughs> adventure plan and in act one my big bad who's supposed to be the the one that that bothers them for eight acts gets cornered and killed in act one right. now what do you do if, i mean if this denial <laughs> he comes back right. well yeah <laughs> but i mean still and i and, have uh, seen where yeah. in, a, in a publish it wasn't a chase but it was they introduced the the big bad at the beginning to give a teaser and then the big bad ends up biting it leading mm -hmm. to future games being ran going i introduce a lieutenant or something because this <laughs> happens <laughs> i that happened to me with a nile empire and i, I was like this is going to be a fun because we're going to grow this guy into a, a serious bad guy that they're going to love to hate and and they'll get him in the end right and in that first act or the second act they figured it out and they cornered him and they killed him. And I'm, I'm like, well, okay. All right. And I, I recovered and we went on, but I had like, how do I do not have that? Okay. So that became the big bad is now on the video screen, giving him <laughs> a hard time. Right. Cause he's got weird science video screen. So he's not even physically there or he's up in the, in the, the blimp up here mm -hmm. with the, the megaphone. So you can't get to him or whatever. And it started, I started having to introduce dislocated, you know, how do I get them so that they can't possibly kill the bad guy? Because I didn't even think about what they were going to do to kill him. And they just, it, it's they like, <laughs> yeah, well, damn, I didn't think of that shit. I should have. And ironically, it's often easier to kill them when they're in a car or something. Like, yeah, <laughs> it just blow it up. under them. Yeah. Cause like Lehman said, we, we shoot the engine or, <laughs> you know, catastrophic failure on the vehicle or something. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say, you know, taking out, Taking out their vehicle seems to be, in, in my home groups and stuff, seems to be, they they like that better than, even if it's a tank, they're going, you know, they would rather <laughs> fight a tank than go on a chase. So you also kind of lean into <laughs> what your table likes or, you know, what your table expects and things like that. Um, again, I've, I've uh, it's just my personal experiences with them have all seemed to have fall, fallen a bit flat but maybe in different situations i would you know if they would have occurred then i would be absolutely loving the, the chases um but yeah always think of what happens if they fail what happens if they succeed levels of success uh, which we've talked about in uh, various multiple episodes those having different impacts can also uh, add to it and as you've been listening now you have various ways to look at chases and tailor them to to your own your own game i think i've only written officially one chase and that's because i could not come up with a way for it not to possibly be a chase <laughs> Yeah, I, I tried, I tried, I tried to avoid it, and I was like, I could see where this breaks down to a chase, so it's more of like an option, and that's when I came to the, yes, chases are are a staple of this type of genre, it makes sense, um, but I tend to go to the, are my players kind of wanting to go that way, if they, uh, if, if I see them rushing towards a chase i would i wouldn't be like no i don't like chases i'm not doing a chase i would be okay you want to do this let's go forward if they're kind of backing off from the the chase then i would be trying to figure out a, a way to mitigate the the length and the steps you just don't want a mandated chase yes like, the mandated chase time, time. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> this is your one act mandated chase you will have it right now <laughs> right. and you will like it 
And again, the, the DSRs don't bother me. Here's the the one, you know, the DSR <laughs> of the act. It's like, oh, when's that coming? What type is this going to be, you know? And I, I'm always looking forward to them. Now, yeah, as we talked about, those can fall flat too. But them falling flat doesn't prevent me from looking forward to the next one. <laughs> so, again, I don't know. It's just different different ways who of knows? thinking about things. Yeah. <laughs> who, who knows the strange mind of Lehman and Chases? <laughs> Well, I think I think part of it is, as I think Jay pointed out in the beginning, this is one of those. And we said this on the DSR episode. This is one of those DSRs where it's the same stat every mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And so there's no in a DSR, in a traditional dramatic skill resolution, you have four, typically four skills and could be at varying uh, difficulty levels. Some I like to escalate them from 10, 12, 14, 16, just because that end is, needs to be dramatic and hard, right? But it could be anything. It could be 10 through, 12 through, whatever. Chases are, you start the thing, you know what your number is. And once you hit yeah. that step A, you know what you need to do. You know how hard or easy it is and what you're going to have to burn as resources to get through this chase. You just, now we just flip cards. We need to know when to be a C and D. And so that can, can that get boring? Yeah, it absolutely can. Yeah, because not only is it the same skill, it's the same difficulty. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's the same person because you got like when I play Darby, Darby's designed to be a wheelman. He's that's what he does. That's where he shines. Right. And so when we get into a chase, if if possible, everybody's like, OK, Darby, when are you rolling? Because you're the guy. Right. He's got right. the skills for driving or flying or or whatever. So typically you've got the same person rolling all it's- four steps. It's kind of similar to uh, the hacking uh, mm-hmm. issues that you sometimes yeah. get in the cyber papacy where either yeah. characters can barely do it or they've been made to do this and obliterate everything and <laughs> just auto succeed everything. And there's when, nothing wrong with that. When they're yeah. built for it, let them shine. Yeah. It, you know, when it doesn't come up often, but let all the I know shine. is when we ran on hallowed data, uh, one of my players made like a huge, like a super nodder. And I it probably would have been easier for me to just skip every hacking rule and just say, okay, you found everything uh-huh. just to save yeah. us time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, again, if, if you, and, and that's the other thing is this page uh 134 in the core rules when you start reading the published adventures you get different things <laughs> you get yeah. like it, like seriously if if that uh that one that we're talking about in the nile if that was a chase it was too much like a dsr for the chase name to kind of hold me back and go oh no it was like no this is like a dsr in my mind um so and i love jay's idea of having terrain or even environment provide bonuses or difficulties. Uh, I could see where it could be really cool to have a chase through a reality storm and you have somebody Mm -hmm. who's having to roll reality um, to protect their fellow storm knights in their plane that they're in. You know, you have one guy, he's trying to do the chase steps. The other one's doing a reality total. And based off of that, you can get some bonuses or negatives um as the storm goes around you and starts doing crazy stuff and then the other you know groups the the villains are doing something similar so um and that's kind of what we said with dsr is when you bring in other aspects it's it makes things Get more creative. interesting and it gets different people um in, involved um so we are actually pretty much at the end of the time hopefully you are rambling on this but it, we we went into it knowing we would ramble <laughs> we were <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully yeah. this gives you a lot of good ideas um for for chases to determine how you would like to to use them um if you love them hopefully we gave you some ideas if you don't like them hopefully we gave you some ideas to either spice them up or ways to to mitigate some of that so but whatever you do, just look at your table, look at yourself, look at the story that you're uh, wanting to tell in Torg Eternity and go with it uh, that way. Do email us at torgdcd at gmail.com. And before we end, Jay, Mark, you have any final words on chases? I think just what Mark said earlier about not being afraid to add in 
other modifiers and stuff uh, mm -hmm. is probably the best advice for running a chase. Uh, without giving spoilers, I guess, again, even though we've been kind of teetering on the edge. Uh, in one adventure I ran, there is a part with a chase where it's a bunch of people on foot running away from like APCs. And so on the road, the APCs have a massive advantage, mm -hmm. but it's set up that if the players think to scatter into the woods, they suddenly get a plus four. Oh, or it increases okay. the, I don't remember, or it increases the difficulty for the APCs by four. I don't remember now. Uh, but so think think of stuff like that, depending on what your players choose to do. Don't be married. Like it's got to be the speed that is the difficulty yeah. in that. I don't that. run a railroad, but you got to stay on the highway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any last thoughts from you, Mark? um just be creative don't 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 get yeah don't get stuck on the railroad <laughs> when you're on the highway i mean layman's uh reality reality chase in the airplane somebody you know make it a combined action nobody's got you be flexible i got to use reality and my my air vehicle skill so i'm at minus two on this oh my gosh you know and then you ratchet it up the the difficulty a little bit by two sure but now it's but it's different now because you narrate it differently don't just present it as a, a going from a to b to c to d and now we're done okay you know if you're the gm and you love doing the you know come up with what's going on pay attention to the di uh jay said you got to know what's going on or know what how it's going to end what to do in case this happens or in case that critical problems setbacks and um um complicated complications. complications yeah know what those those three cards come up on chases frequently know what you're going to use because you already you're the game master you know what you're doing with the chase you know what the situation is come up with some really cool stuff you can throw at them so that it makes it interesting when those cards come up you want to throw them up you want to throw it out there anyway throw it out there anyway like jay said with the environmental stuff that's a really good idea Throw stuff up there that get gives them problems, gives everybody problems. I chase. I like chases, so <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so we do again. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Torg Delphi Council debriefings. Please email us at torgdcd at gmail dot com. And until next time, we hope you have fun in your own cosmos. Bye, everybody.